If you all can uh, turn your videos off, please, and uh, mute your microphones, uh, that will just help with the internet connection. Rebecca? Uh, just a moment, everyone. My apologies. I'm just trying to turn micro, uh, videos off and microphones off as well. Okay, so let me just start that introduction again. Uh, my name is Anna Lafleur. I'm the development manager for FIBA in the Oceania region. Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, John Reardon uh, presenting today. Uh, his topic will be on three-person officiating, uh, so 3PO in short, as he, go through, uh, as he goes through his presentation. Uh, John has a wealth of knowledge, and I'll just read through it. Um, he's the, uh, for Basketball Australia, is the current Women's National Basketball League referee manager. Uh, he's currently a FIBA technical delegate. Uh, for Basketball Australia, currently the national, uh, a national referee instructor. He is also part of FIBA's Global Referee Instructor Program, which is the FRIP. Um, he's also the Referee Technical Commissioner for Basketball Australia. In his past life, he was a coach for the Penrith Basketball Association and up till 2000 was an active referee. Um, and he's put down here that he uh, officiated me in two of the uh, National Basketball League uh, games way back about 100 years ago. So um, he will have some video which is included in his presentation. Um, because internet is uh, a bit of a struggle because everyone's online at the moment, uh, you will all receive the PowerPoint presentation and the recording uh, of this webinar. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please send them through the chat. So at the bottom of your screen is the chat uh, option uh, and send them straight through to me. And then at the end of John's presentation, uh, we'll be able to go through those questions. So uh, again, thank you everyone for being online. Uh, lots of uh, returning faces, lots of new participants. So I'll now hand you over to John. Thanks, John. Thank you, Annie. And uh, yeah, it wasn't that long ago, but <laughs> the joys uh, playing against some of the superstars as you were in, in the WNBL. I'm hoping if uh, you can confirm, you can see and hear me. You can see the uh, presentation and hear me. Uh, yep, yep, you've got it on the slideshow now, which is great. <clears throat> Fantastic, thank you for the opportunity and uh, thank you personally for uh, giving me the, uh, the opportunity to uh, talk about something that I'm very passionate about. Um, obviously, uh, uh, some experience, which I'm very thankful for the, the team at FIBA Oceania, uh, particularly Albert Joseph and, and Basketball Australia, because uh, you know, the, uh, the luck that we have, uh, we make the most of it, and uh, happens to be a sport that I, that I truly love and dedicate a lot of time to. As, uh, as everyone has that has uh, joined this uh, conference. So hoping everyone is safe and well, both physically and mentally in tough times. So uh, let's get stuck into it. Again, as Annie said, uh, from a chat point of view, welcome the, uh, the communication, it is two way. Uh, this platform is a little bit different to what we normally would do because some of it would be as we are doing now through presentation, but a lot of it would be on court. So welcome the chats. I also encourage feedback. So uh, my English, particularly around a, a topic that I'm very passionate about, I do like to talk very quickly. So uh, if that is an issue, no issues at all, just let Annie know and uh, I will slow down accordingly. Let's get into it. Okay, so the agenda, uh, overall around 22 slides, couple of videos, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, particularly eight different things. And then at the end, hopefully, if there are some questions through the chat, we can follow them through. But what is 3PO? Uh, what are the positions on the court? What are some of the basketball terminologies that we use, particularly at the FIBA level? Uh, what are the areas of responsibility, the AOR as we call them? 
Um, we're going to touch specifically on lead um, and talk about rotations and when to rotate and how to rotate, particularly transitions and just some of the basic positions uh, in some sections of the game. So, uh, as I said, 22 slides, not going to go for, for hours, but uh, hopefully uh, full of education for you. I'd like to start with, with an opening quote, and that is particularly around our game. There is only one game, only one game matters. And with three referees, there is still only one officiating team. So there is one game, three referees, but still one officiating team. And the emphasis there is officiating team. Many times in games, uh, we have three very individual referees and uh, no one bringing the team together for consistency in that particular game. And unfortunately, some of the games are affected. Okay, mechanics in the front court, particularly in the green position is trail. Obviously, trail in the position is usually trailing the play. Center in red, obviously, is on the opposite side. And of course, lead is in front of the play as much as possible, if not at all times. Terminology, some of you may have heard this, some of you may have heard recently some alternative uh, uh, words used, particularly from a coaching point of view or a player point of view, but the terminology we use from a referee point of view is, as you can see there, uh, when the ball is on the left-hand side of the floor, as we're showing here, we're calling it ball side. If the majority of the players are on the left-hand side, we're calling it a strong side. And if the ball is on the left-hand side and the opposite side, it's the weak side. And another term we use is opposite side. So particularly when you are making calls, foul calls to the score table, you are moving to the opposite side of the court. Just a quick check, there was a little bit of echo, so we're okay from a hearing point of view. Annie? Uh, yep, can hear you loud and clear. Perfect, thank you. Some uh, colour uh, to show the breakdown of the areas of responsibility. Of course, this is the same uh, front court from an area of responsibility. The big challenge here that most people that aren't used to 3PO is the blue shaded section, which is the area of responsibility for lead. And it is quite a unique shape. But the points particularly are, lead is looking, for, looking after the play from the inside of the three-point line, and I reiterate, inside of the three-point line, across three quarters of the way up the key area, across to the split line of, of the court. So again, quite unique compared to the 2PO position. So not to confuse it, this is the 3PO version. That is their primary area of responsibility. In the green section is the trail responsibility. And again, this is the point where in the outer part of the court, as you can see here, they're looking at the three point shot, the sideline and all other areas here in the front court. That is their primary area of responsibility. And of course, the remainder of the half court or quarter court is center's responsibility. Having said that, as shown here in the blue section, this is Leeds' primary area of responsibility. And on some occasions, you'll find that contact occurs on a drive coming through here. But to be clear, if contact occurs here, that is illegal. We expect Lead to make that call. If lead sees that action, does not see that action, I should say, does not see that action, but trail does, this is their secondary area of responsibility. Trail with patience can make that decision. But again, need all of the information, need to ensure it is illegal contact and allowing lead the decision making time, and if not, to make that decision. If I refer to the right hand side of the floor, it is purely just a flip of the, the play where we would say that this is the ball side of the play and therefore lead is on that side of the play. 
to that point, lead and trail should be on the ball side as much as possible. And if the ball, as we'll talk shortly, ball is reversed to the opposite side, uh, then the rotations and the mechanics will change accordingly. And we will touch on that very shortly. So clear, that's lead's primary area of responsibility. Something very new to a lot of officials that have coming from the 2PO. Now here in a little bit more depth to show the vision of each of the officials. And as I indicated, you've got the lead in their setup position. Again, a core uh, terminology is setup position at 45 to the play. At that time can also see the front of the ring. And you can see their vision using peripheral vision in this position can see any illegal contact happening in their primary area of responsibility. Trail in a much deeper, much wider position, again, has much more of an open angle to the play and a lot more of the basketball court covered. And of course, center here at 90 degrees to the play has very good peripheral vision for off-ball coverage in such situation. So again, using the dotted lines as the peripheral vision, of course, should lead move to an outer position, then of course the, the vision will again change. Or if they move closer in towards the basket, then again, that vision will then close even more. Areas of responsibility and particularly dual coverage. So please excuse the A3. This is an example which uh, we've used from uh, the FIBA IRF app where you can put in players A1, A2, A3, A4, A5 as offense and B1 to 5 as defense. In this situation, we're saying that A3, player A3 has the ball and they are at split line for this example. But you can see in the situation here where lead is in what we call a closed down position. Trail is trailing the play. The ball has come from trail's position into split line or area two. Once the ball comes to area two, we expect lead to go from the setup position to the closed down position. They do, we ask this because should the ball continue to move towards center, then lead is in a position to start the rotation much early and much quicker. So here the ball is in split line, is in area two. It's come from this position. Trail will control and have area of responsibility until such time as that ball leaves area two and then it goes to area three, of which center will then 100% own it. And by the time the ball moves across to this area here, we expect lead to be in the rotation phase moving to the new setup position. One other point is in such situations, you can see trail has 45 degree angle, refereeing the defense, looking for illegal actions of the defender. But at the same time, if you remember the previous slide of center having a 90 degree view, here they have turned their angle at 45 degrees showing both trial and lead, their body language is, I'm now aware the play is coming towards me. This is a great point for center from a teamwork point of view. It shows that I'm switching on to such play or what we call, I am now checking in. But trail is also checked in. Trail understands they are the primary coverage on such play. Center has checked in purely and simply if the ball moves quickly towards them, or if there is a legal contact on this side of the play, which trail may not see. And again, as indicated in the previous slide, if there is a legal contact and the primary responsible official being trail here does not see that illegal contact, then we would expect in shared area or dual coverage area center, if they see 
the illegal action, see all the play with patience, then making the decision to make a call. So again, just to reiterate, the ball is now in area two. The ball is with player A3. Because the ball is in two, lead is in close down. Both trail has checked in, center has checked in. Center is waiting for the play to move all the way to area three. And once that play does move, then lead will rotate and we will see trail also come with lead and start the rotation. Continue the rotation, my apologies. Okay, we touched a lot on lead. Lead works on the baseline, obviously, whether it be this end or the other end. But for examples, here we will show one end of the court. I touched on this position here, which for us is the setup position. And that's a working area which can be from where the lead is shown here, anywhere to here, from here to here. Okay, inside the three point line. Yes, to ensure they have an open angle on the block, on the restricted area, the zone, the paint, and ensure that if a drive comes, they're picking up that drive. So here, this is the working area. As indicated, the closed down position is between the free throw lane. And as you can see, the edge of the backboard, that's the closed down position. And clearly, as you can see by the, uh, the lollipop type colors, generally, we do not want you working in this area. Purely and simply as part of the individual officiating techniques or IOT as we call it, you don't have the depth, you don't have the uh, distance. Therefore, everything you see is going to be at much quicker action and your decision-making is much tougher when you see things so much faster. Key points for the lead is to work outside of the court, not on the court. Very different to center and trail, where we expect center and trail to work on the court at all times. Lead should always keep their torso front of rim. That is, always in a position where they can see the front of the ring. Remembering our area of responsibility, front of the ring is also part of lead's area of responsibility. We expect lead to adjust position and to maintain open, wide angles, creating distance at all times. And we will talk about cross step later. And preferably the outside in angle and those that are as old as me and been refereeing it's a little bit different but when you put yourself in an outside in position you do see a lot more and you have better judgment skills the field of vision should always enable you to see horizontally and vertically as clearly as possible and as i mentioned keeping distance from the play at all times what does that mean it means not just men can jump eight ten feet vertically the women's game has improved dramatically. The athleticism of both the men and the women's game is at an extreme high level. And we need to reward that and ensure that we at all times, whether it be men or women, are in the right position to ensure we can see whether or not the defense is jumping the block shots vertical. The... Uh, we need to be in a position, not just to referee now, but also aware where the next play is. And we need to be in a position to anticipate the next play. What does that mean? We need to be in a position to know that where the pass is coming from, where the screen is going to come from, therefore we're in a position to officiate that play. So the anticipation is, is at a level now that we expect you to be aware of what's happening in the game the what and the why what's coming so there's no surprises the lead referee should always have control of the game in the shot clock they're in a position where they can see the game clock and shot clock they may not make the end decisions for end of quarter end of game 
but you're in possession of what's happening with the clocks. And again, the position of close down is for the rotation only. Many times the lead referee gets into the position, particularly at local association level, and we go here and we stay there. Rather than anticipating the play, working the outside in, refereeing the defence, looking for illegal actions, we stay in this position and we just move our head. Again, we need to work in the working area and go to close down in part of, as part of the rotation. A few more pictures, a few more colours. Again, I've touched on some of these points. So the ball is a little bit more confusing, but again, as, it, as indicated, here is the setup position of lead. Here is the close down position of lead. And for instance, if the ball is on here, so we're on ball side now, whether it be where the point one is or this particular ball, then again, as indicated, lead and trail are on ball side as much as possible. If the ball is here, trail is looking after their primary area of responsibility while lead is in the setup position, looking at the play in the restricted area or key area. If the ball gets passed across to the top of the key and goes to area two, as indicated, once the ball goes to area two, we expect lead to be in the close down position, initiating the rotation. Of course, if the ball comes back, then we expect lead to then move back to the setup position. If the ball goes from two, as discussed, goes to area three, then we expect lead to go from the close down position to continue the rotation all the way through to the next setup position. When this occurs, so going from here to here, trail goes from trail to the new center position. As the ball arrives here, center will change their angle as per the previous slides. Will have primary area of responsibility of the, the defender, not so much the ball, but the defender picking up the nearest defender. And should they choose to move, then they would then go to the trail position ensuring that at all times they're able to referee this play. If they maintain a position here or here or here, then they need to understand if there is transition or a turnover, then they have a lot harder work to be used to ensure they get to the new lead position. Again, a reason why we ask that trail, trails of play. In this situation during rotation, you may be in this position here to get the best open angle to referee the defense. We can understand that and we accept that. However, in transition rotation, you need to be prepared to work harder to get to the new lead position. As indicated, the rotation happens. We have lead here, we have the new trail. We now have the new center. And here is the action area. So by the time the ball is moving here, the reason why we have lead rotating is to ensure that they're aware that this is the action area. This is where the play is going to develop. This is where we need two referees working to ensure that we identify any illegal action. Another key point for lead going from close down to the new setup. Again, you'll notice that I say lead goes from close down to setup, not close down to close down. For those that have been involved in the game with 3PO for many years, that's a major change over the last few years. Some people still do not understand this, but we're going from close down to the new setup. It is a brisk walk to ensure you get there early enough to referee the action area. But in doing so, you are scanning the paint. You are looking for illegal actions, which is critical. And in this motion of lead rotating to the new lead position on the new ball side, trail is moving here. There will only, there should only ever be two referees moving at any one time. So during that rotation, center maintains their position and referees that defender. Lead scanning the paint. Trail is aware where the ball is, but again is hustling to their new center position. 
again, the the English, the discussion, the uh, the cursor, etc. Hopefully, has helped. This is a perfect example where we would do rotations on the court, and I again I stop, I pause, and encourage people if there are questions, please do note them via the chat function, so we can touch on it further. There are no silly questions with refereeing. We've all asked them. We've all sought information. So I hope that description with this uh, footage has helped you. Right now, we're going to look at a perfect example. So uh, for those streaming, you will see an NBA game. Uh, first few seconds of a game, to be honest. And uh, we will see the rotation, which I've just discussed. So I will play this a couple of times for everybody. with somebody other than the Celtics, and it starts with a three. Yeah. Look too old there, and tired. Paul Pierce with a beer, Johnson on him. They go right to him, and he knocks down the tray. Lowry finds Valanciunas, got to back down Pierce, and here Johnson, a high flyer, trying to stop through the... Tired. Here, the lead referee is in the close-down position. Paul Pierce with the... Here, they're about to start the rotation. Center Here picks up the play, maintains their position. Right to him. He knocks down the tray. Trail has moved to their new position. Lowry finds Valanciunas got a back down Pierce. And you will notice that Lead was already in the position to referee the action area. Again, I'll replay it so everyone can understand. Um, I know those that love the game of basketball, particularly very recently, the, uh, the uh, series that's on now. But, but again, please do take note of the referee positions. That will help you understand what we've just been discussing. With somebody other than the Celtics, and it starts with a three. Doesn't look too old there. And tired. Paul Pierce with a beer, Johnson on him. They go right to him, and he knocks down the tray. Lowry finds Valanciunas, got to back down Pierce. And here jumps a high flyer, trying to stop through the... Sire! Again, reiterating close down. Paul Pierce for the... Now looking for the next Pierce action area, which is number 17 white, right potentially. He knocks down the tray. Now knowing that 17 white is now going to come to the post. He's already in the position to referee the action area. I hope that has helped you from a description point of view. Again, putting such actions on the court does help us. With somebody other than the Celtics, and it starts with a three. Okay, so the mechanics, rotation. First of all, the transition. It comes with the transition. Trail to lead, you have to run. You have to run, you have to beat the offense. The offense now, they're practicing eight second offenses, four seconds offenses. We need to be faster. We need to be practicing a fitness levels to be at above the current level that we are officiating. The game needs us to be much fitter. Close down position, as we said, once the ball is in the middle of area two, as we saw, the, the, uh, the lead referee went to close down position, stopped, identified where the play is going to uh, eventuate. So again, a great understanding of the game, knows the, the pick the roll, the, uh, the offense going from the, the uh, ball side, coming back to a post area. The lead rotated early, but also while they were walking briskly, they were also refereeing, so they were scanning the paint to understand where the play was coming from and where it was going. You saw that Trail uh, worked with lead, as we indicated, two referees only at one time. Again, they rotated with lead. While the whole time, although center had four players, was in a position to referee the defense. At that time, Trail got to the position, picked up the high post situation, which was closest to him. Center continued to referee until they knew that lead had finished the rotation. And the particular point here is finishing a rotation is good, but you need to be in a position ready to officiate. 
and as indicated, we prefer you to be stationary and have distance on the action area where you're about to officiate. So you saw that Lee gets to the stationary position and is ready to officiate the action area, which happened right in front of him. Again, great understanding of the game and where the offense was being created. Another key point which we've added here is no rotation with quick shots. And we will show you an example very shortly with the quick shot where there is penetration on the weak side. But also the point of with five seconds or less on the shot clock, we don't rotate. We need particularly that last shot at the end of the quarter, end of the game. We need referees to officiate that last play. That's what people remember. That's what we must get right always. Okay. We spoke about weak side and about the rotations. And if we rotate, we rotate early. Let's have a look at another video example. So again, we, we will just uh, play through. So in this situation, in this situation where you can see, we have a one-on-one -on -one situation and center identifies that, but we also have a lead at that situation has eight players with trail on the strong side as such. Here is a situation where it's a one-on-one -on -one and we expect the centre referee to referee the defence. So here they are watching B5. I'm not sure what the number is on the video clip, but purely watching B5, looking for illegal actions. And the arrow, the up arrow that you can see here is a cross-step position. As the ball goes left, the centre cross-steps the opposite way, therefore can maintain an open angle on the defender and is able to to officiate all the way to the basket. You will note also that because lead does not identify this and chooses not to rotate early, they get to a position of here in the close down position and makes a decision which they regret. And you can see their position of their body language of pulling out knowing full well, Santa has owned it from the beginning to the end it's their primary area of responsibility. They've seen the illegal action. Lead wasn't on the ball side. It's, they're not in their primary area of responsibility. Therefore, they should not have made the call. So again here, picking up the defender. Defender dribbles left, he cross steps right, sees the illegal push, makes the call. And you saw the lead official quite rightly acknowledged, good call by my partner. Hey, let's stick to our primary area of responsibility. Didn't happen again for the rest of the game, I am certain. Okay, earlier I mentioned a few things about IOT, the individual officiating techniques. I hope all those uh, participants who are attending uh, have heard of the IOT. Again, I'll refer to some documentation which we can provide to you to help you understand what it is and how that can be implemented to help your game. But you'll see all positions are for reference only. So X doesn't mark the spot. X means we expect you to be in or around that position. Why do I say that? Because if we were to say X, uh, for center or X for trail particularly, and a player wants to shoot from that position, we're not going to have a fight with that player as to who stands where. We need to identify that we are supporting the game and we need to adjust. So be ahead of that player 
identify that shooter is coming to that region or that player is coming to that space and occupy one close to it so you can referee the defender on that play. So X doesn't mark the spot. It's there for reference. Lead particularly is a little bit different, particularly the setup position and uh, you are off the court as well as the close down position again because you are off the court. There shouldn't be any players uh, taking your space. We expect you to be 45 degrees to the play. That means that you're in a position to identify the defender, to referee the defender, not looking at the gaps. We expect you to referee the defence. So looking for illegal actions by that defender. There's no illegal action by the defender and there's contact. Either it could be very good defence, a good no call, or potentially an offensive foul. Again, referee the defence in every situation. We also, as mentioned and shown in that clip, had the centre referee maintain their position, they would not have been able to referee the, or see the defence, let alone referee the defence. They crossed up the court to identify the good defence until such time as they did make the push or hands foul, whichever he saw and called. So again, cross step is another tool which we can use to keep our distance from the play, allow us to see not only the defender, but also the good vertical defense. Transitions. Transitions, as I mentioned earlier, are critical. Uh, we need to be in a position where at the elite level, it's four seconds throughout the entire game. So four seconds from trail to lead, all game. Not just the first couple of minutes, but all game such as the expectations of the team. Remember, they're subbing in and out, and a fitness level needs to be at that level. Whether it's uh, at the Olympic level or within the FIBA Asia, FIBA Oceania competitions, or practicing at your local association, working hard to get that four seconds happening. A lot of work off the court is needed. As indicated, four seconds is what we need. We need to be working outside the play. Outside the, the play is what I'm talking about. But on the court, in trail and centre, lead is the only official to be off the court. And again, as indicated, we need to maintain and keep the same distance, keep the same wide angles. And whenever working in trail or lead, we are working at the same speed as the players. Never trying to get ahead, or then slow down, maintain that speed up the floor in line with the play. A couple of points about uh, specific points in the game and how we start. The R is now the crew chief. The crew chief will throw the ball, will toss the ball. The U1, you'll notice, has a blue square around it, and that's a change in position that People talk of, but it's never changed. U1 should be in this position at all times. Their role is to ensure that the toss is high enough and straight enough and is a fair toss for both teams. And if not, they're to call it back. Their role is also to ensure that it's clear when the game clock should start. U2 is in a position, obviously, to ensure that there is no illegal actions outside of the circle also. But the U1 is responsible for the toss, high enough and straight enough. We don't want U1s in this position. And at the time of the toss, all three referees need to be ready. You can see, depending on the tip-off direction, if the play goes to the right, then we're expecting the U1 to hustle to the lead position and go straight to the setup position. And we expect then, obviously, the crew chief to then come in behind the play as a trail, and we expect you two to hustle to the center position. And of course, the reverse, if it goes to the left, same thing on this occasion. However, we're asking for the closest referee being the U2, hustle to lead, the U1 to hustle to center, and the crew chief to then fall in behind as the trail official. And again, work to the area of responsibility, which was touched on one of the first slides. Free throw positions, again, it's a major part of the game. 
uh, tactic wise to ensure that they get the quickest and the best uh, rebound, the fastest rebound, both in the, uh, the key area, but also the external players around the three point line. You'll see the big changes here are center is on the sideline. Yes, and they continue their vision is on the free throw lane, making sure the shooter does not violate, but also as normal, opposite lane is their field of vision, but their position is much closer to the sideline. Lead, of course, administering the first, sorry, the last free throw, both free throws here and looking at the uh, opposite lane. And here we have trail, again, ensuring that all other rebounders are following the rules also. Okay, I've touched on a couple of resources. Um, I'm hoping some of you, if not all of you, have seen copies or seen sections of the home study book, which is a fever presentation uh, from the Global Education Department and it's referred to as the HSB, a great tool with a lot of this information, a lot of the pictures uh, and data has come through this. Uh, as a FRIP instructor, this is our, uh, our reference guide, but also some of you may have seen or used the FIBA iREF app, or whether it be on an app or an Android uh, format. I encourage everyone with a, uh, a smartphone to identify the iREF uh, platform because it is a great tool to, particularly if uh, we happen to be traveling and my words may not be understood, we don't get an opportunity to get on the court to practice, but visually I can show you what I mean. And a great opportunity for knowledge, some key points to help you with pre-game discussions, as well as the, a lot of the pictures you've seen today come from that iREF app, which I use regularly when going on to so I've taken a lot of your time, um, a little bit more than allocated, but, but I, uh, again, I thank the opportunity to Phoebe Oceania, to Anna, Annie and the team. Um, very passionate and I encourage that the communication not only um, happens today through this video format, but ongoing through WhatsApp, through emails, etc. Uh, we love our game and we want to support you as referees and we are open and uh, we invite you to, to uh, let us know how we can help you in your uh, refereeing endeavours. Now I'll leave it to Annie for the chats uh, if there are any questions or Annie if you've got any feedback. Yeah, thanks John. Um, we've actually had a few questions come through so they are a little bit long because uh, everyone's trying to set the scenario. The, so I will just read uh, through them. Um, so the first one is, should lead always begin a rotation if the ball moves across above the three point line to the old weak side? Or should lead wait for the other action areas like a post play as well as the ball? Great, great question. So again, when the ball goes to two, lead goes to close down identifying the next action area. If the next action area is on the weak side, the current weak side, then the rotation should begin. Of course, you're going from close down to the new uh, lead position. Having said that, that action area may change. What we expect is by the time you get under the ring, you continue to go. However, there may be some situations where you are looking at the action area and you see it has changed and, and you need to, uh, what we call abort. So you need to reverse and go back to the original setup position. That's okay too. And that's why we have only two of the three officials officiating at one time. I'm sorry, moving at one time, rotating at one time, center maintaining that refereeing at all times. Great, right. thanks John. Um, if a player is right in the corner close to the baseline in front of the lead official and has the ball, should lead watch for the out of bounds violation from that player? And if so, where should they stand to achieve this while still maintaining vision of their primary area? Great, so sorry, just to reiterate, just to be clear. So are we saying if I 
I'll just pull up. Uh, so, for instance, if I, can everyone see the uh, the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. so what yeah. we're saying is the ball is here. Is this what we're saying? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if the ball goes out on the baseline, yes, we're expecting Lee to be aware who touched it. Yes. So if the ball is in this position and then goes out, we need to identify who's actually touched it last. Remembering that in this situation, lead is primary for here, but trail also has a secondary coverage here. So they're also watching the play. So here, if lead is clear as to who has touched the ball from within this area being their primary, then they should make that decision. If they're unsure, particularly that the ball has come from a secondary area, all they should do is blow their whistle, identify the ball has gone out of bounds, show the stop clock violation signal, then seek help from their partner, from their friend in trail and say, do you have additional information because I did not see who touched it last? And trail, hopefully will then have said, lead, it is the blue ball or it last touch red, it should be blue ball, call blue ball, then lead will then blow the whistle and identify which direction and state. Blue ball, throw in. Okay, thanks, John. Sorry, I'm just, the questions are coming through now. Right. Um, there are some that, yeah, we, we don't have enough time to answer all of them. Um, so, John, uh, and we are available uh, through email uh, if yeah. you do have questions and we can Absolutely. send you um, the resources. Um, so, uh, just sorry, this, so this is a long question. Mm -hmm. um, and painting the scenario, at a club level, we run 3PO on our high level men and women games to help serve the highest skill. Uh, sometimes these games can be very difficult to know when to rotate or lead. Um, and no real high level structure. Uh, so very inconsistent skill levels between players and teams. So this is an example, ex-NBL players and FIBA Hall of Famers on one team playing uh, uh, still a skill team, but not at the same game understanding as the others. Do you have any advice for referees learning 3PO on these games and tips for practicing on court on these sometimes difficult games? Great, great, <laughs> great, great chat. Um, yeah. Again, you know, th this is the basics. This is the guide. At local association, we have a variety of levels of experience and levels of understanding of when to rotate and when not to rotate. I encourage you to use the, the IRF application and where, as we put in, we put in A3 player, etc. You have the ability to put players on the court to show a visual demonstration of what the game would look like and where the official should be and put plays together using what I've spoken about here as a guide. But again, ensuring you are aware of the areas of responsibility. And if in doubt, then ensure that at all times the game is covered. Uh, at the elite level, at the, at the high level of what we're talking about here, we are expecting the primary referee to make the call. At local domestic level, uh, we are expecting you to look after the game and mechanics are second or probably third priority, considering the way that some players play. Uh, white line fever want to win. And I encourage you to ensure that all three referees are aware of the basics, which we've touched on, because they are the basics. Utilizing the app and the pregame sheets and to put play phases together so everyone understands us. When the play moves to this side, then I expect, we expect to us three to be in this position. But the be all end all with an exclamation mark underlined is, we must look after the game and call the illegal contacts. We can work out which referee should have made the call in the change room afterwards. Great, so, um, so last question. Um, there are others that have come through, so if you can, email me directly your questions. I uh, will get the answers out to you. Um, which referee should signal a three-point shot attempt from different shot locations and different rotations? Very good, very good. So primary referee, trail or center, are the only people that are looking at three-pointers at this level. So trail or three-point or, or trail or center. 
So uh, in the situation of the second video example where center had only a one-on-one, -on -one, if that person was to shoot the three, then the center would identify it is a three-point attempt. And if successful, they would show both hands as per the FIBA uh, rule book for our signals. And as per the FIBA mechanics, we would show both trail and center would be showing three points successful in shadowing it. So the closest official to the three point attempt would make the call, that being trail or center. Lead does not show three points at the basic level. Great, thanks John. No problem. Um, again, we did have some other questions, but I, I feel like we could go on for another half an hour to an hour to go through them. So yeah, we're more than happy to answer them. If you can send those questions directly to, to me, um, we will be able to get you the answers. Um, John, thank you for spending uh, your time today. You know, you put this presentation together for our participants. Um, for our participants, you know, it's great to see you guys online. Um, trying to develop yourselves um, and then sharing your knowledge with others. So again, thanks. Thank you to everyone for being online today. Um, again, we appreciate your time and we Absolutely. look forward to seeing you online again soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Annie. And to everyone, stay safe and healthy. And Annie, fantastic work. Thanks for uh, giving everyone this platform, uh, changing it up considering everyone's on lockdown. Wonderful work. Libra Oceania. Thank you. Thanks, John. Bye, everyone. Stay safe.